I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I will talk about the problem number one um, in the category of rational numbers, especially the decimal representation of the rational numbers. The problem is about the fact that uh, uh, rational numbers are represented in, as decimal fractions um, as uh, uh, either finite or infinite periodic uh, fractions. Now, the problem is um, I would like to prove that sum of two periodic decimal fractions is still a periodic one. I used that particular result in um, in the previous lecture where I was trying to prove that any rational number can be represented as a, a periodic decimal fraction. So it's a very important, um, albeit simple, fact that sum of two periodic decimal fractions is still a periodic decimal fraction. Um, I was thinking about uh, proving this basically on a piece of paper for myself and then present a nice and smooth uh, kind of a proof for general audience. But then I decided um, I will try to explain um, the solution to this problem, or proof if you wish, in the same way I was thinking myself. Because again, the purpose of these lectures is strictly educational. So I think it's very important for anybody who um, views these lectures to see um, not just the final result, but the way which we are using to approach that final result. So, let's consider I never actually thought about this particular problem. I'm presented right now, I have to prove that uh, the sum of two periodic decimal fractions is also periodic. And how can I approach this? Well, first of all, um, as, as, as any person probably would do, I would just check what happens if really I will add two periodic decimal numbers together and see what happens. All right, let's just, for an example, take one periodic number, 0 0.030303, etc., which is 0 0.03 in period. And another one, which is, let's say, 57, 57, 57, etc., which is 0 0.57 in a period. Well, if I will add them up together, well, that's easy because, as you understand, every period um, is basically self-contained and the result will be 60, 60, 60, etc., which is 0 0.60 in period. That's a simple case. Now, what's simple about this case? First of all, the length of the period is the same. And secondly, I don't overflow the period. Well, these are basically two main difficulties which we are facing when dealing with this particular problem. How to deal with uh, periodic decimal fractions which have different lengths of the period, and how to deal with overflow. Well, let's just consider them one by one. First of all, what if I have two different lengths of the periods? Let's say I have a fraction which has 0 0.142, 142, 142, which is 0, etc., which is 0.142 in period. And another function which is 75, 75, 75, etc., which is 0 0.75 in period. Well, this is actually a relatively simple thing because you see if this period is three, de three decimal digits, and this period is two, it's quite obvious that any multiple of these lengths will also be a period. Like in this particular case, this 2142 in a row is also a period, because 142 is repeated many times. Now, in this particular case, 375s in a row is also a period. So basically what I'm doing here, in the general case, is the following. If um, one periodic decimal number 
has n digits in the period and another n digits in the period, then obviously that the first number uh, can be interpreted as the one which has n times n digits in the period. Because if n is a period, then any multiple of n is also a period. Now, this having n, I can also say that n times n number of digits represents the period for this number as well. Because again, if n is a period, uh, length of the period, then any um, number multiple of m would also represent the length of the period. Like in this particular case, therefore, I can represent these numbers as these. One forty two period is the same as one forty two one forty two in period. Seventy five in period is the same as seventy five seventy five seventy five in a period. And these two periods have the same lengths. That was the purpose. So I have reduced my more general problem of having different lengths of periods uh, of two different numbers to the simpler problem uh, which uh, where I have these two numbers having exactly the same lengths uh, of the period. Okay, basically that's the general way of approaching any kind of a problem. We first simplify it as much as we can. The second problem which we dealt with was what if it overflows the period. Like in this particular case, obviously I am staying within the period if I will just summarize each period independently. Like in this particular case, it would be what? 7, 1, uh, 7, 9, 9, 8. So the sum of these numbers is actually, a, again, a periodic decimal number. And it will have this as a period. And the number of digits in the period is exactly the same. And obviously, if this piece is repeated uh, infinite number of times, and then this piece will be repeated infinite number of times because summarizing can be done completely independently within the length of each period. All right. So now we have to consider the case when um, we do have an overflow of the periods. All right. Let's go again to a simple numerical example, and then we'll see what happens. Let me wipe out this long six decimal digits periods and go to a kind of shorter one. So let's say I have 1.87 in a period and 0 0.75 in a period. So that overflows um, the period lengths because the sum would not be less than 99, obviously. Well, let's do it this way. Let's just write down exactly how it is as an infinite decimal fraction. So this will be age is seven, age is seven, age is seven, age is seven, seventy-five, 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 etc. Now, let's start somewhere. And let's not think about this tail. What happens if I just summarize? Five and seven is uh, twelve, so it's two. And one is there, 15, 16, and one goes to the next position. That's what's very important. I'm overflowing the period, and um, and not, uh, and one should be added to the next position. So now, instead of 7, 5, 12, I will have 13. But then everything else will be exactly the same. So it will be also 6, and one here. Next will be exactly the same thing. 3, 6, and 1 here. And next will be 1 point. So, as you see, 63 now becomes a period. If I started somewhere much further, this also would be 63. So if we imagine that the whole thing is uh, infinite towards right, then all will be 63s. So it seems to be the same story. The period length is basically repeated, 
And the only difference is that I might have some overflow to the very left digit. So if it, if it used to be zero, then it will be one. OK. That's actually true. I mean, if you will consider the most general case, when you have um, any period here and any period there, but the lengths will be the same, what happens in the worst case? In the worst case, you will have a number one transferred from one period to another one, which just increases the last uh, digit in the, in, in the period. So I can actually say that in the general case, the worst which can happen is that two different numbers, two different periods added together might be actually increased by one. And basically, that's the only thing. Um, is it a proof, actually, that everything really will be periodic with the same length of period, etc.? Well, uh, you might consider this not exactly be a, a, a proof, because I was using the real numbers instead of some kind of a generalized algebraic uh, symbolical uh, notation. Um, but you know, let's try to do it in a more general case, and uh, I will probably get exactly the same result. So the result would be that one should be transferred to the next position. Well, how can we do it? Well, let's just consider it this way. If you have number, let's say, 0 0.p in the period, and you have another number, which is 0. Q in a period. P and Q having the same lengths. Like in this case, P is 87 and Q is 75. Now, what actually happens in this case? Let's consider for definitiveness that the length of the period is n digits. Okay? What does it mean? It means that p contains, p is an integer number, like 87, which has n digits. In this case, it's 2. q also is a different integer number, which is 75 in this case, and it also has two digits. What it means is that this is a representation, if you remember uh, from the lectures which preceded that thing, of a, a rational number which can be obtained from uh, summing up geometrical progression. Remember, if you have something like this, sum of geometrical progression which starts with A and multiplier Q, then uh, it's actually equal to A divided by 1 minus Q. I do remember this formula, but if you know, uh, if you don't know the formula, it's very easy to derive it by multiplying this by q and subtracting the results. All right, so in this particular case, um, what this is, is the following. Let's just wipe out this. We don't really need this example. So we can say that this particular number is p times 10 to the minus n divided by 1 minus 10 to the minus n. Why did I write it down? Well, first of all, you can always return back to the lecture um, which uh, preceded this particular problem, where I derive actually this particular expression. But in any case, you understand that this is exactly what it is. Because what this represents, it represents the first uh, member of this geometrical sequence. Let's go back to the numbers. It's 0 0.87. The next one will be 0 0.0087. The next one will be 0 0.0087. Right? And sum of all these up to infinity will give this particular number. Right? So the beginning is 0 0.87 because in this case it's 87 times 10 to the minus 2 the power of minus 2. And every next one is 1 hundredths of the previous. So 10 to the minus 2 is actually the Q in this particular formula. All right. 
And obviously, this one can be written as this, which has exactly the same period lengths. That's why we can write it this way. All right? Now, if I will summarize them together, what I will have is obviously P plus Q times 10 to the minus N divided by Y minus 10 to the N. It would be great if P plus Q is less than 10 to the nth degree. Like 87 and 75, unfortunately, is greater than 100. So I can't really say that this is exactly uh, the representation of this type of um, uh, sum of this type of geometrical progression. So if P is this and Q is, I don't need this, and Q is 0 0.75 plus 0, 0, 0.075, etc. So 75 and 87 exceeds 100, so I can't really say that I can summarize it. That's exactly the overflow which we're talking about. However, what I can always say that if P plus Q is greater than 10 to the nth degree, in this case 10 square, which is 100, I can always say that this is the same as P plus Q minus 10 to the nth degree times 10 to the minus n divided by y minus 10 minus n plus 10 to the n times 10 to the minus n divided by y minus 10 to the minus n. So I subtracted 10 to the nth and added 10 to the nth. Now, if 87 plus 75 is greater than 100, like in this particular case, where n is equal to, I can always subtract that 100. So what will be? It's 150, 162, right? Right, so it will be 62. So this actually represents a nice periodic number, which is 0 0.62 in this particular case, right? Because P is 87. Q is 75 minus 100, so it's 162 minus 100, so it's 62. So this represents a nice periodic decimal number. And what is this? As you see, this is exactly 1 over 1 minus 10 to the minus n degree. That's what it is, right? Because this actually is reducible. Now, what is this particular expression? Okay, let's do it this way. It is quite obvious that 1 over 1 minus 10 minus n represents um, 1 over 10 to the minus n plus 1 over 10 to the minus 2n plus etc. etc. It's also a sum of geometrical progression. With the first member 1 over 10 minus 2 to the minus n, and the every other um, member factored or multiplied by 10 to the minus uh, second degree. Now, so what we have right now is one periodic number, which is 0 0.62 in this particular example, and another periodic number, which is 0 0.010101, etc., etc., for our example when n is equal to 2, right? This is a period. This is a period, this is a period, this is a period. So what happens if I add periodic number 62 with a periodic number 0, 1? Again, in a general case, what happens if I add some kind of a periodic number which has n digits in the period r, and
and the number which is 0, 0, 0, 001, uh, where the number of digits is exactly n. In our case, it was 0 and 62 in period, and this one was 0 and 0, 01 in period. So the length of these periods is exactly the same, and all I'm doing is I'm adding 1 to the very last digit. What have I just done? I have reduced, again, a more complicated problem. What happens if there is an overflow when I'm adding two periodic numbers? I have reduced this to a slightly simpler problem. What happens if I reduce, if, if I add two periodic numbers where the second one is just one in the very last position of the period? So, what happens is very easy to understand in this particular case because all I'm adding to this right now is just one to the very last digit, which doesn't cause any overflow under any circumstances, no matter what R actually is, except one. What if R is nine, nine, etc., nine, and positions? Then, if I add 0 0.0001, also n positions, then I will have an overflow. So that's the only difficult point which remains in this particular problem. Because if it's 8, for instance, and I add 1, I will still be within the period. I don't have an overflow. OK, fine. So all these more difficult cases were reduced to only 1. When I'm adding 0.0001 n positions, to a number which is a decimal fraction which has nine um, repeated n times as a, as a period. Okay, the whole big deal of different uh, rational numbers represented in, in different ways and with different periods, with overflow, without overflow, is basically reduced to one small problem. What happens if I add this to this? And this is relatively trivial uh, case. Um, because of the following. These numbers, which have nine as certain number of nines, actually, in, in the period, um, they are really very special kind of numbers. And here is why. Um, it's actually the same thing to write 0 0.9 in the period and 1.0. These are exactly the same numbers. Why? Well, first of all, we can use the formula uh, for a sum of geometrical progression, in which case, in this case, it will be 0 0.9 as the first uh, member of this sequence, and um, it's uh, 1 tenth as, as, a, as a multiplier, right? which basically means 1, obviously, because this is 0 0.9 and this is 9 tenths. So using the formula, this thing actually means exactly 1. Now, just using the common sense, it's also kind of obvious, because look at these numbers, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, etc. Each one of them gets closer and closer to the number one. This by one tenth, this by one hundredth, this by one thousandth. But if you have an infinite number of lines, it's infinitely close to one, and infinitely close to one means equal to one. So that's why these numbers are really special, and they introduce certain level of, um, how should I say it? Uh, I don't like the fact that the number one can be represented in two different ways using decimal fractions. Um, but, well, I guess I don't have a choice but to allow these numbers, or alternatively, I can say that any number, any decimal fraction, which has nine as a period, should actually be prohibited completely from the usage and replaced with a different number where all these nines are completely cut off, and the digit which is preceding these nines is increased by one. Like in this case, I can cut off the tail of all nines and increase zero by one. If it's a different number, let's say it's 0 0.57, and then all nines, 
then I can say that this is really 58. So by basically changing this type, I can always say that, hey, this is actually 1, 1 1.0. And then if I add it to this number, I will have 1 and then this type of thing as a period if I add these two together, which is a periodic decimal number which we actually wanted to prove in all different cases. So again, um, it's not like a, a smooth presentation of somebody who um, rehearsed this type of thing in front of the audience. I was trying to present it in exactly the same way as I was thinking about this problem myself. And um, I think it's very important. So. Um, again, you, you consider your problem in certain uh, particular cases, then you understand the deficiency, when it's not really complete, how can you generalize it, what kind of uh, um, more general cases you should consider, and finally you exhaust all these cases one by one, so the proof is relatively complete. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. That's it for problem one.